Welcome to South Sound Seniors, a program for and about older adults in our community. And first off, I want to say a huge thank you to the people here at Thurston County Media. They provide this wonderful studio and all this equipment so that we can bring this program to you. And of course, a huge thank you to our amazing producer, Tom Patton. Tonight's show is going to be one of our Senior Action Network shows. SAN, Senior Action Network, is a group of folks that get together to network that want to work with seniors. And every other month, we have a guest that SAN arranges. And tonight, we're going to hear about NAMI or NAMI. Depends and, on where you're from. Well, you are Chris, Chloe, and I'm so glad that you're Pleasure. here. Thank you. You bet. So how does the NAMI or NAMI, I have to sing that song. You say NAMI, I say NAMI. Sorry. You've I got it. To, I get good. carried away. Yeah. So what, how does location make a difference in how you say it? Well, we're all across the USA. Mm -hmm. We started 40 years ago by two mothers in Windsor, Wisconsin, which is a little bit west of Madison, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. who were talking with each other around a table like this, quite similarly, about how come they were tired of being blamed for their family members' mental health conditions. Okay, so tell me, NAMI is the... The National, National Alliance, Alliance on Mental, mental illness. illness. Okay, very good. So they were tired of being blamed for the mental illness in their family, their children. That's correct. Okay. And um, we've grown the, from those beginnings mm -hmm. to being the largest grassroots organization throughout the United States. We have a chapter in every state, 19 chapters here in Washington state. Oh, wow. I'm with the Thurston Mason chapter, Okay. which is located mm, kind of close to downtown Lacey as far as the offices. Okay, great. And how long have you been associated with NAMI? I came to NAMI about four years ago when one of my daughters asked me if I had ever heard of the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Uh -huh. I said, no, I don't know anything about them. This being the day of computers, uh -huh. I Googled and looked it up. And this is really interesting. They have some information that would have helped our family 22 years before hearing about it. Wow. So it's kind of become my second retirement. Okay. You know how you're wondering about something to do at 73? Right. What am I gonna do after my working days are over? Right, uh -huh. and, and so I got involved. Okay. Because we have more than one family member who's living with a mental health condition. Okay. And nobody in our network of family had ever heard of it before. Right, that must have felt very lonely or isolating as you were dealing with that, but other people in your family didn't have an understanding. Nope, none of us had had the experience of someone handing us a brochure or mentioning and it saying that there's folks here that could be of help mm -hmm. to you. Um, because the National Alliance on Mental Illness provides a lot of programs okay. for persons who are living with mental health conditions mm -hmm. and for their family and friends, their loved ones who are in support and providing a support network for them. Uh-huh, wow. So what, you looked it up on the internet initially, and then how did you connect with the NAMI group that you connected with? Well, they had a telephone number on the website, mm -hmm. so I gave them a call. Uh, often the volunteers are persons who uh, have some kind of lived experience, either mm -hmm. themselves personally, often referred to as a peer in recovery, who is an individual living with a mental health condition, mm -hmm. or it's a family member who has some kind of lived experience. Mm -hmm. And once they understood what my circumstance is, mm -hmm. they were able to recommend some programs and groups that I could participate with mm -hmm. to learn more about how I might take care of myself, mm -hmm and how I might be of support to the loved ones in my family who are experiencing mental health conditions. Wow, how did that feel when you finally connected with this? Well, when I went group? to my first meeting, I kind of sat there and cried. Wow. Because here were a group of people who were living some of what I had been living, mm -hmm. and they were doing it in support with each other. Right. 
Wow. And the other thing that I found interesting was that over half of the people who were in attendance were seniors, like wow. myself. Uh -huh. Because of all of the generational changes that are happening in America, mm -hmm. parents of our age mm -hmm. are caring for adult children who have a mental health condition. Right. And maybe even because of that, they're caring for grandchildren so they have a generational circumstance going on right. where the person living themselves with a mental health condition is impacting the whole family system. Right, right. Wow, it must have felt pretty incredible to know you weren't alone, that there was help out there and people that understood on a real basic level. Yeah, that must have been really amazing. There's kind of a process that happens in the support group where you have an opportunity to check in mm -hmm. with right where you are right now. Mm -hmm. And depending upon what's happening in that particular moment, the skilled facilitators have a way of guiding the conversation so the group shares with you their lived wisdom experience mm -hmm. and guidance how to connect with other resources in the community. Wow. So is it the... NAMI organization itself that helps to train those skilled facilitators? Yes, beginning at the national level, we have a strong commitment to the fidelity of specific programs. So there are some what are referred to as signature programs that are evidence-based. In other words, they've been developed by professionals in the mental health and behavioral health services mm -hmm. and they've trained persons to be the teachers mm -hmm. which is basically reading and providing the lectures mm -hmm. which have been professionally prepared so the information is consistent mm -hmm. or facilitating in a group to respond to the trauma that the person is in. For mm -hmm. example in my case my family member had been recently hospitalized and was in the hospital. It was their sixth hospitalization in 22 wow. years. And once again, it was, what are we going to do this mm -hmm. time? So I was a person who was in a trauma circumstance. Right. And so right. the programs have been designed to recognize mm -hmm. that as a learner and a, as a participant, I'm going through a whole myriad of emotions right. and need for a lot of information. Mm -hmm. So the education programs, which are without cost to our participants, wow. have been developed to meet that kind of a person who's wanting to learn, mm -hmm. an adult learner that's in trauma. Yeah, wow. Kind of like getting a lifeline a little bit, I'll bet. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Each. Yeah. Each segment, for example, the family to family class, which is a class taught for persons who are the family members in support of a person living with a mental health condition, mm -hmm. has 12 segments in it. And each segment is like a new life ring of information wow. that helps you understand the disease nature, just right. like diabetes, or heart condition, mm -hmm. or any of the many, quote, physical diseases, mm -hmm. it's now clearly understood that the mothers sitting around the table 40 years ago, mm -hmm. they were not responsible for their loved one's mental health condition. Right. There's actually an injury that's happened to the human brain, mm -hmm. usually at a point in time with development that stops that particular development of that part of the brain. 25% mm -hmm. of lifetime mental illness conditions have had some kind of event that happens by the age of 14. Wow. The yeah. other approximately 50% on top of that has happened by age 24. Okay. And then the other 25% off into the 30s and 40s. But mm -hmm. so much happens to the brain while it's and in the process developing. of developing. Right, right, yeah. So that must help people put a whole different perspective on interacting and caring for and living with their perso person with the challenges of mental illness. For sure, there's a whole um, lifting of any sense of regret or guilt because you have an understanding that you were actually dealing with a traumatic event 
right in those circumstances mm -hmm. but you didn't have the skills mm -hmm. to respond appropriately in yeah. that circumstance yeah but well, hope is not lost yeah one of our guiding principles is that we together as a group keep hope alive and we work with each other and support each other so that we can be there for our loved one in the way in which we communicate mm -hmm. and the way in which we have an understanding of their mental health condition. Yeah, I bet for many people it's a real light bulb that turns on because some of the behaviors before you realize that it really is a illness can seem like oh, they're doing t this to me again, or they're, you know, causing this purposefully in, in my life. You know, it might, must really be an aha moment that, oh no, this is the illness that's creating this behavior. Right, one of those behaviors is often referred to as denial. The person mm -hmm. just doesn't recognize that they have a mental health condition or they're sick in any particular way. Uh -huh. And often from an outward appearance, they look like things are okay, don't really understand what's happening there. Right. It's been given this long name, onosognosia. Oh, well, that is onosognosia. Onosognosia. Uh -huh. It's an actual condition because that part of the brain has been injured. Mm -hmm. So the person does not have the ability to recognize that they have this particular illness mm -hmm. and do something with it right. other than say, leave me alone, right. which doesn't help right. <laughs> <laughs> because being left alone, the person's condition and circumstance becomes even more difficult right. because they withdraw mm -hmm. and then the family starts withdrawing. Right. And then they start really feeling all the stigma that's associated with having a loved one or being a person who's living with a mental health condition. Wow, wow. Well, Chris, I got to see you and your director of our Thurston Mason NAMI group. Marilyn Roberts. Marilyn Roberts, and you both did a nice presentation to our senior providers meeting a few months ago. And I know I learned a lot um, and I'm looking forward to a presentation you're going to be doing in the future. Do you do a lot of outreach and presentations in the community to help promote NAMI? Yes, we're very fortunate in our chapter that it has a strong base of about three dozen volunteers, many of whom have received some education and training. Mm -hmm. So when an employer has a need for some kind of education and communication, mm -hmm. uh, we provide a resource table mm -hmm. of materials and access to gaining information and participation in support groups and classes. Or if there's a group of individuals, such as the Senior Action Network or mm -hmm. other groups that you mentioned, who is uh, interested in learning more about the topic of mental health, mm -hmm. uh, mental health disorders, behavioral health, those kinds of circumstances mm -hmm. where a person is in need of support, we show up and have about a 20 minute presentation mm -hmm. that we're able to provide that's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. Tip of the iceberg. Just kind of a tip of the iceberg. Yeah. NAMI's whole approach is like that. Mm -hmm. Provide it. people with information where they are and persons accept and apply the information that will help them at that moment. Mm -hmm. And then that brings them more and more into the process. So they can learn more deeply what is there and what's available. And yes. Yeah, okay. So if somebody is just sitting at home right now and kind of hearing about NAMI for the first time and um, have some concerns in their life that it's piquing interest, how would they connect with our local NAMI chapter? So the local chapter website is NAMI, N-A-M-I, T-M dot org. Okay. Stands for NAMI Thurston Mason mm -hmm. chapter. There's also a Washington state chapter, which is NAMI WA dot org. Okay. And there they can see the links to other chapters within the state of which there are 19 chapters or follow a link to the national office. Okay, very good. And 
do you have any information on a regular basis, like at a library somewhere? I'm just wondering if somebody doesn't have access to a computer, where could they call or where could they go to hear a talk? Is there any standing way people could access? Well, one that comes to mind really quickly is the number 211. Mm -hmm. The number 211 is a social service number mm -hmm. similar to 911, but it's for non-emergency things. And there are persons trained there who can guide an individual to resources. Okay. I don't have our telephone number memorized. That's okay. <laughs> but they can also reach us by telephone or okay. email uh -huh. to provide that. We also have a group of volunteers that unlike what was happened in my circumstance, I never saw any information mm -hmm. about it. We go into various provider locations, mm -hmm. emergency rooms, clinics, other providers, and we have brochure racks that are there. Uh -huh. And the brochure racks are on various topics. Mm -hmm. The brochures have been developed by professionals and have been vetted and put together mm -hmm. for us by professionals and provide up-to-date, succinct information mm -hmm. on topics with regard to various mental health conditions and the kinds of support groups and education programs that we have. I seem to remember when you spoke that there's kind of two tracks of educational resources and one is for more the families of people with mental illness, but it seemed to me there was also a track for people who have mental health issues. Can you speak a little bit about that? Certainly, that's very appropriate, because although NAMI started from the family perspective, how can I as a family member support my loved one? Mm -hmm. It was very early recognized that persons who lived with mental health conditions most of the time do not have to be warehoused somewhere. They can be active participants at their level of recovery and life contribution mm -hmm. right where they are within their home and within their community. Mm -hmm. So we have a number of programs that begin by persons going into even junior high school and high school and presenting their information. They have the program which is known as In Our Own Voice, mm -hmm. which is a person living with a mental health condition who mm -hmm. has attained a level of recovery where they're able to actively participate. Mm -hmm. So we have support groups that are run by persons who are known as peers, called Peer Connections, mm -hmm. that is run by and in, has participation of persons who are 18 years or older mm -hmm. living with a mental health condition. Wow. Um, the family to family track, which mm -hmm. is again a different kind of peer. This peer is a person who is, has a family member who's living with a mental health condition, meets the needs of families, mm -hmm. and also has education and support group there. Okay, wow. So you brought, you said that there's a campaign going and the theme changes annually. Tell That's me a correct. little bit about this year's so, campaign. So, so this year's campaign, I'll let you read that for me. I care, do you? And it's a question mark with a backwards question mark so it forms a heart. That's right. That's lovely. This is a campaign that we participate in and invite people to put their own statement in there about why they care uh -huh. about mental health, behavior health, that particular topic as it fits into their life. Mm -hmm. And this is part of our effort to reduce stigma. Okay. For example, when this chapter started 25 years ago here mm -hmm. in the Thurston Mason area, the couple who started our chapter went door to door looking for persons who were living with mental health conditions and their families so wow. that they could begin a network. Now because that's in, dedication. It's very dedication. We have a real debt to these persons mm -hmm. because in those days, if you were really severely ill, which is currently the situation for us as well, mm -hmm. you would be living in a mental health hospital. Mm -hmm generally run by the state, although there are a couple private institutions. Or you would be hiding at home. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, those persons were hiding at home. Now those persons are out actively participating. Mm -hmm. Depending upon where you live in the country, 
it's between one and four and one and five adults who will have some kind of mental health experience, wow. which is defined from the perspective of the professionals as someone who for two weeks or more in the course of that year continuously during that time is not able to adequately live life and love mm -hmm. and participate in whatever are their daily activities. Uh -huh. So that means pretty much every family knows mm -hmm. somebody, right. if not within the family, is touched by a neighbor yeah. who has something happening. And yet people are in silence right. about that even today. So our effort is to help build a stigma-free society not right. just with mental illness. There are lots of stigmas that exist, but right. our focus has exactly. to do with behavior health and mental health yeah. conditions. Right, right. Well, Chris, I am so glad that you came in to tell us about NAMI. Again, I look forward to um, you and Marilyn speaking. Um, and I wish you all the luck in the world. It really is something that needs to get more well known in our community. And um, I hope that this show today can help with that and that maybe you can come back again and tell us a little bit more about what's going on, maybe about the, the classes or the groups. And I think that would be Eileen, lovely. we would be very pleased to do that. And we really appreciate your support in providing this forum for us to share some of what we're experiencing. Well, you're very welcome. And this is a program for and about seniors, and you're a senior with right. a very wonderful passion for volunteering for this great cause. So I thank you about that. But I know there's a lot of other seniors, as well as people of all ages, that need this information. So right. thanks you're so welcome. much. You're welcome. Okay, we will be back again in just a few moments. So please stay with us. <laughs>